Ryzen, the number two, and leaks, three of UFD Tech's favorite things all in one video. That's right, the sequel to AMD's brilliant Ryzen chips is almost here, according to the latest leak in the SS Ryzen 2000. The leak, which AMD obviously hasn't confirmed yet because then it wouldn't be a leak, includes various super official looking slides that detail all there is to know about the next gen Ryzen chips. We've poured over some deliciously enticing rumors and leaks surrounding AMD's upcoming chips before, but this latest one seems by far the most credible. So enough talk, let's get into it and talk about it. For those of you not in the know, we've known that AMD was planning on launching a new series of Ryzen chips this year for a while now, and that they'd be built on a 12 nanometer process node, a good step up from the original Ryzen line of 14 nanometers. We also knew a few other details that AMD has already confirmed at CES, but what we didn't fully know was what we were going to get, how it would perform, when we'd be getting it, or how much it would cost until now. The leak slides come courtesy of El Chapuza's Informatico, which give us all the details in certain sites believe that these will be included in AMD's presentation on launch day. The most exciting slides by far include information on four upcoming Ryzen 2000 chips, the Ryzen 7 2700X, the Ryzen 7 2700, and the two Ryzen 5 chips dubbed the 2600X and 2600 respectively. All of the new chips on top of sharing the same 12 nanometer Zen Plus node have a few other things in common too. All of the chips will feature memory support for up to DDR4 2933 MHz, will feature 16 PCI Express lanes, and each chip will come bundled with an included Wraith cooler. And since it's Ryzen, all chips will be unlocked for overclocking. It's time to go fast. And all four chips are expected to drop next month on the 19th of April. The flagship processor of the bunch seems to be the 2700X, which just like all three chips in the original Ryzen 7 lineup, will feature eight cores and 16 threads. But that's about where the similarities to the Ryzen 7 lineup ends. The 2700X will see a massive boost to TDP coming in at a whopping 105 watts, which makes even the 1800X 95 watts seem low. It's a much higher TDP than we'd like to have seen, especially since we figured the smaller process node would result in better efficiency, but thankfully the better, uh, the higher TDP also coincides with a decent boost to clock speed, which is basically AMD's MO. You get the, a the FX9590 has nearly 200 watt TDP, but you get five gigahertz clock. That's just how AMD does it. Instead of making things more efficient, they just make it hotter and faster. But how decent of a boost are we gonna get? Well, how does a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.3? 5 gigahertz sound. Mm -hmm. One of original Ryzen's biggest drawbacks was its relatively low clock frequency compared to Intel's offerings. And while the 4.35 gigahertz isn't exactly the five gigs that it's easily attainable on the new Coffee Lake chips, it definitely closes the gap significantly. The 2700X is also expected to feature 20 megabytes of combined L2 plus L3 smart prefetch cache, which will ship with the boxy Wraith Prism cooler and is priced at $369. The 2700 non-X features the same specs as its X counterpart, including the core and thread count, as well as the cache size, but drops the TDP to a much more manageable 65 watts like the Ryzen 7 1700. Unfortunately, that also coincides sides with lower clock speeds and the 2700 is only expected to deliver a base frequency of 3.2 gigs and it's still an impressive 4.1 gigahertz boost and presumably you'd be able to overclock it to the same as the 2700X. Anyways, AMD also decided to skip the Prism cooler for the 2700 and we'll be bundling it with the Wraith Spire LED cooler instead and we'll be selling it for $299, which actually sounds reasonable. As for the two Ryzen 5 chips, both the 2600 and 2600X will feature six cores and 12 threads, just like the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1600X that they'll be replacing. Both processors are expected to come with 19 megabytes of combined cache. The differences between the two follow the same format of the two Ryzen 7 chips in that the X version features a higher TDP and clock speeds. The Ryzen 5 2600X will run at a TDP of 95 watts and it is expected to feature a base clock of 3.4 gigs and a boost clock maxing out at a dang decent 4.25. Over on the non-X side of things, this 2600 will run at a 65 watt TDP and feature a base and boost clock of 3.4 and then 3.9 base and boost respectively. The 2600 will be kept cool by the Race Spire non-LED. And will be priced at $249. While the non X version will ship with a low profile Wraith Stealth cooler and will feature a $199 price tag. Now, specs weren't the only things the slides gave us to chew on, so let's take a look at some of the 
other juicy morsels of information that the leaks had to share. The original Ryzen processors brought with them two boost modes, namely XFR, extended frequency range, and precision boost. And now, according to another very interesting slide, the Ryzen 2000 series will be shipping with upgraded versions of both. The first is called XFR2 Enhanced Mode, because of that's like electric blue, it just makes sense, which is billed as Enhanced Temperature Aware Precision Boost 2, which basically means that if CPU temperatures are kept at a manageable level, the chips will be able to hit and maintain higher clock speeds than what we've seen on previous Ryzen chips. The second boost mode is called Precision Boost Overdrive, which is a mode that will only work if you have your 2000 series chips installed on one of the new 400 series motherboards. So you ain't get in this on the X370 that you got. This mode, if temperatures and your motherboard allow, will boost clock speeds even further than XFR2 enhanced mode. This means that the new chips likely won't be able to hit their max clock speed on the older 300 series motherboards, which, you know, for all the celebrating that we did for AMD for not, you know, dropping AM4, they're just, I mean, yeah, you still might have to get a new motherboard to get the best out of the new parts. Speaking of motherboards, three other leaked slides have those covered too. According to said slides, AMD's board partners have around 20 one new 400 series motherboards ready to launch alongside the new chips on the 19th. None of the slides mention whether that includes both the new X470 and B450 chipsets, but from what we can make out, it seems like we'll be getting the more capable, but undoubtedly more expensive X470 boards first. The slides also go on to detail a few main selling points of the new boards, including optimized memory routing for high-speed memory support, optimized VRM and power layout for CPU overclocking, lower idle power, improved USB port functionality, and data transfer rates through USB hubs, bootable NVMe RAID support, and finally something called NMOTIS Fuse Drive and AMD Store MI, or Store Me, I don't know. I don't care. So there are quite a few benefits to going with a 400 series board along with your new and improved Ryzen chip, but that doesn't mean you have to shell out the cash for one if you already do have a 300 series boards, 300 series board singular, but you could have more than one. We have more than one. Anyways, AMD wasn't kidding when they said that they're gonna keep supporting the AIM4 socket for a while, and the new chip should be able to work with 300 series boards as long as the BIOS of said board has been updated for it. Current 300 series boards from MSI Gigabyte and ASUS are expected to receive the update somewhere in mid-March, while it should be already available on ASRock and BioStar boards. Okay, so there's a lot to process here. So instead, let's just get to the only part that really matters. How well are these new chips actually going to perform in games? Well, you guessed it. Even more slides are coming to the rescue, or more specifically, two slides. One shows how the flagship Ryzen 7 2700X battling it out against its main rival, Intel's Core i7 8700K. And another shows the chip duking out with the old 1800X. The first slide pits the 2700X versus the 1800X in an all-out 1080p ultra settings gaming duel and sees the 2700X come out the victor by 5 percent. More impressive than that though, even though the 2700X was likely never designed to match the gaming performance of Intel's 8700K, it comes surprisingly close, only falling behind by 7.7 percent. And sure, these benchmarks come from AMD and should thus be taken with a handful of salt, but even if it's only a 10% difference, it'd still be impressive. I mean, it's impressive because of the price and cost difference of the chips. Like, you're paying $300 for a 2700 that can overclock to the point of a 2700X, and then the 8700K, is, it's just a lot more. And anyways, moving on. Now, clock speeds across the board are a little lower than I'm sure many were hoping for, but they're more than significant enough to entice people who are looking to pick up an old Ryzen chip into spending a little more cash to get one of the new ones instead. Also, unlike previous gen, where only the non-X chips were bundled with coolers, the addition of a cooler with each new Ryzen chip is a great move on AMD's part. It cuts the cost quite heavily, even if you're getting the highest end chip. There seems to be a significant enough performance upgrade over previous gen Ryzen to make this actually a worthwhile release. And there's some good value to be found too, especially if you're looking at picking up one of the non-X chips. But if you already have a Ryzen 7 or one of the top tier Ryzen 5 chips and aren't all that interested in the functionality of the new 400 series boards, we don't see too much of a reason to upgrade if these leaks are accurate. The boosted clock speeds will undoubtedly help you squeeze out a few extra frames while gaming, but if gaming is your main focus, you'd still be better off going with the blue team. All of that being said, none of this is set in stone. Even though these slides seem to be all but confirmed by AMD itself, which I, I mean, yeah, that all but confirmed part is important. 
we'll likely only really know what's going on when AMD finally unveils their new number crunching babies. That's a weird picture. That's that's an odd metaphor. Anyways, regardless, are you all excited for the new generation of Ryzen chips? Did you hold off on the first generation, hoping that there would be massive improvements for the second gen? Are you holding off altogether on upgrading since DDR4 prices prevent a financially wise upgrade? It's just like you need to get new RAM. Like it's just crazy. Anyways, I'm keen to hear all of your thoughts and comments are there down below in the comments section or over on Twitter. I am at UF Disciple. Be sure to hit that like button. If you enjoyed this look at upcoming rise in prices and specs, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.